Kerbal Space Program have been out for some years, and as any good old game, it has some tricks and even exploits that can be used to fly some truly ridiculous missions. This time around I want to combine some of the common tricks and make if single stage to orbit design. A while ago I have long run to our mission, and of course, I forgot one of the turbulence on the surface of EVE. Now it is time for the rescue mission. Rescue mission need to make precise landing on the EVE sea level, rescue pill and cask, refuel the craft and get to orbit, and maybe even get all the way back to Kerbin or Gilly from the orbit. While Kerbin or Lathis STOs are rather easy to design, Infernal Atmosphere of EVE pose some extra challenges. Yes, there are some workarounds, like launching from the top of a mountain, but I need precision reusability and sea level operations for the rescue mission. So, there are some challenge points. Atmospheric density of EVE destroy engine efficiency, and there is an insane drag of said purple atmosphere. More delta V is required to get to the orbit of EVE, and both ascent and descent can easily overheat unshielded parts. And finally, jet engines does not work. To pull off SSTO design in this environment, we will need almost every aerodynamic trick in KSP1. Some tricks look like intentional design feature, on the other hand, some just normal tricks combined together make up for some borderline exploit mechanics. And well, obviously, some tricks are definitely in the realm of magical gameplay exploits. So, today I will explain craft that use heat shield wings, remove aerodynamic drag and heat from numerous parts, use extra attachment point tricks on propellers and engine plates, and finally, I would be breaking the game just a little by giving vanilla engines some extra throttle. And yeah, I will not even touch Kraken drives or infinite fuel exploits. This list is more than enough to do EVE SSTO. First I will explain construction of this vessel and specify all the tricks and exploits. Then I will fly a rescue mission with some commentary. And let's hope I will not fail miserably at English language in the process. So this rescue SSTO is named BABE, which stands for Big Ascent Booster for EVE. And you can find even more cringe based names on my channel in other KSP videos. So without, without further ado, let's go for the construction tips and tricks and I cannot even do the voiceover. Here is completed space plane and there are a number of advanced wings under the hood. There are built-in fairing occlusion, heat resistance from engine plate, built-in angle of attack for wings, and even some automation with skull controllers. When you construct craft like this, the first and main issue is to resolve transfer to EVE surface. With orbital speed over 3k meters per second, anything with temperature tolerance of 2k Kelvin would be annihilated as soon as the steel hit dense layer of atmosphere. This includes engines, RCS and various equipment. You can fight it off by doing control tree entry with engines facing flamey and down, but then engines are pretty much exposed, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. To overcome issue of low temperature tolerance and to shield your engines from the heat, there is a trick. For that, we will start craft construction from simple 3.75 meter engine plate. Then we will add 2.5 meter fairing with a matching nose cone. These two parts in tandem will allow to shield the engines, fuel tanks and other equipment from both heat and atmospheric drag. Only engines that are attached to the connection points of the engine plate will gain drag resistance. And as you can imagine, we need quite the amount of various engines to make this SSTO design. With a simple trick, I can add different engine types to an engine plate. First I select quad attachment points and place vector engines. Then I have set engines to have a better reach to engine plate. Select any other attachment point and place nuclear engine. From this point, I can offset the view once again. And select other attachment point option and add even more engines. This way you can have up to 45 engines attached to a single engine plate. Quite impressive, but for now, just 5 engines would be more than enough. Now adjust final engine placement and close off engine plate by adding matching nose cone. Then offset the nose cone inside of the craft. With these simple steps, engines inside engine plate gain heat resistance and would ignore atmospheric drag. Since nose cone is offset, engines would burn as usual and give craft the momentum. Now we can build the fairing. In simple terms, Fairing will remove drag of any part occluding the root of the part. So, we build enough fairing to occlude fuel tanks with various equipment and then offset it back into the engine plate. This way, engine plate would protect fairing from the heat and fairing would kill drag of the engine plate. Pretty interesting symbiosis. Both tricks alone are intentional design features. 
but combined together, they are pretty much borderline exploit. Considering that fairing can shield fuel tanks and other equipment, this is pretty much recipe for a drugless and heat-resistant rocket. And here's a kinda issue. No drag is bad. You want to slow down not by simply hitting the ground at the cosmic speed. Obvious answer would be to use aero brakes and shoots. But regular aero brakes are complete garbage. They will overheat and blow up. You can use deployed landing gears as the next best thing. When deployed, they provide substantial drag and are quite heat resistant. But overall, you lose any precision with this approach. We still want to mount the rescue op, and this is why I want to make a space plane. Space plane means something with wings, and wings will obviously have some drag. But there is actually the way to make very effective wing with no or minimal drag. Also, this type of wing have very good performance at supersonic speeds. Heat shields. Heat shields placed at 45 degree angle provide insane lift to weight ratio. If heat shield stack is placed between two matching nose cones, it will also lose any atmospheric drag, and it will still maintain the lift. While I can use only heat shield wings, and even if set nose cone into the central fairing to have totally dragless wing, I still want normal wings to resolve some stability issues. And for the most part, normal wings would be the only stopping force and limiting factor for the re-entry and ascent. But since wings are one of the most heat-resistant parts, Powered control re-entry would do the trick. And looks can be also deceiving. This craft have not 4, but 16 big delta wings. And this amount of wing error is also important to have low speed lift all the way up into the middle layer of EVE atmosphere. Also craft still need some sort of the aero brake on the top of the normal wing drag. And the aero brake comes with the ascent method from EVE C level. Getting up from the sea level on EVE on the single stage is kinda pretty much unrealistic. But with clever use of propellers, we can give this craft an extra 14 or maybe 15 kilometers of altitude before the rocket engine ignition. Actually, if you can make propeller plane that reach 15 km altitude at if, you are pretty much at the sea level of carbon in the terms of the atmospheric drag. My design was able to reach 12 to 13 km altitude during testing, but during the actual mission I was able to hit 16 km altitude with this craft. 16 km is more than enough to make us still without further exploits, but we'll still have one more. Anyhow, we still need to sort our propellers. And the thing with the propellers is that they are rather difficult to manage. If placed at workable angle, propellers provide insane amount of atmospheric drag. And this would make an ascent an absolute nightmare. Not only you will fight extra atmospheric drag from propellers, uh, you will also have a lot of drag up front of your craft, which make the whole construction of the craft kinda unstable, and if you consider that your body is pretty much drugless at this point, yeah, you kinda have very unstable issue. But at the same time, if you tilt your propellers perpendicular, they provide minimal atmospheric drag. But then, when they perpendicular, they just do not provide thrust. Kinda catch 22. But there is a simple option on the fan blades. With a simple deployment of fan blades, we can activate and deactivate very effective fire break and our atmospheric thrust. And to remove the drag completely, we can place propellers inside of a cargo bay. This way, propellers will only affect craft performance at the required moments. So the only thing here is to make propellers to work with minimal automation and break attachment points once again. First, just like with the engine plate, I will add way more fan blades than expected. I select 6-way symmetry and add fan blades at 90 degree angle. Then I select add 8-way symmetry and add 8 more blades. This way every rotor would have 14 blades, almost doubling its power output. For this vessel, I use 4 rotors. To avoid unnecessary rotational torque, select 2 rotors and reverse rotational direction. Also you need to reverse orientation of the fan blades on these rotors as well. Now rotors will cancel out any rotational torque. So the next part is to automate our propellers. For this we will use Cal controller with one simple command. Place controller, open action groups, select main throttle, select Cal controller and put play position into the main throttle action group. Select your Cal controller. When it's open, select the fan blades. We want workable angle from 0 degree angle to somewhere around maybe 45 degrees. Put deploy angle into the cal controller action group. 
edit cal controller and put the 45 degree angle range for the fun blades. Since I hate geometric controls, just go for the set linear progression. And you know what? If you are the person who ever puts A-type logarithmic potentiometers into the guitar volume controls, you should probably burn somewhere. Because you can be fancy and say that you can do volume spells with that. You know what? I can do volume spells with my linear B-type pots as well. But you know what I cannot do with your freaking logarithmic controls? Yeah, I cannot do the gain control of my amp. This is kind of bad when you have like 5 degree rotation of your potentiometer to control like 50% of volume, like... Why? Alright, okay. Now we need to select every single fan blade group and do the same setup for the deploy angle. When you are done with controller and blade setup, we need to automate system deployment. For that, let's select one single action group and add the action group deployment for the cargo bay drawers. Place toggles for motor power and engagement for every single rotor. And to activate fun blades, do not forget to make toggle deploy. Obviously, every toggle by default should be off. So, with one single action group, you open cargo bay doors, you engage your motors, you actually activate the deployment of the fun blades, and now with your throttle control, you will be controlling the angle of the fun blades through the cal controller. And now it is time to break our single engine with another cal controller. Place controller in the place where you can reach it during the flight. Open action groups, select the second controller. Now select the engine and put throttle into the action group. With throttle control, you can control the throttle. And with simple logarithmic UI oversight, we can just go over 100%. Now during the flight you can select independent thrust for this engine and with manipulation of cal controller play position you can just go over 100% of engine thrust. Engine fuel consumption will match the extra thrust, but ISP and heat generation will still remain the same. Also you need to be careful since in this manner you can pretty much rip apart your vessel from the G-forces. Now let's talk about other things in this STO design. Four big propeller rotors require quite the power output. To meet this insane power drain, I put 8 large fuel cells as the main power core. This will also give the quite amount of the battery storage by the default. Also the main issue with the propellers is their torque, and I am talking about the parasitic torque, not the main torque that is cancelling out each other. While totally fine in the low atmosphere, once you reach something about 10 km at the low speeds, this parasitic torque can just flip the craft. For the, this parasitic torque mitigation I am using something about 12 large reaction control wheels. And I actually place them at all 3 axes. Maybe a bit overkill, but it is too late to stop with overkill features of this SSTO. Also one of the main failures during testing of this craft was overall center of mass balance. I have increased vertical ceiling of propeller setup from 13 km to 16. And that was the simple result of perfect fuel balance into the one spot right under the center of lift. And it's also quite important to remove roll controls from your pitch and your controls. This will save you from unnecessary low altitude stalls. This craft also carry a big converter tron and large drill to refuel on the surface of it without time warp exploits. And as one last feature I want to mention RCS placement inside of the cargo bay and engine plate skirt. Vernier engines are quite bad due to their low heat resistance, but once you place them there, they are basically immune to any heat. You will only need to open up cargo bay doors to activate your forward RCS. So let's wrap all this construction talk and do the actual flying part. Right from the start we will use our propeller setup. Craft is very easy to handle on the runway and climbing at big angle on curbin is rather easy. When I reach something above 5 km I fire up my vector engines and shortly after I add up 45 degree angle. Horizontal speed is still very important. But overall, curbin as a steel part is very relaxed for this craft. I leave some accelerator to retain my RCS capability and have some fuel for the fuel cells. And here where I break my nuclear engine. I set engine itself to an independent thrust and set play position of cal controller to the desired value. It is tempting to overdo, but acceleration forces are still there and anything above 2 seconds on this controller will just rip apart my spacecraft. Also you can notice that throttle numbers do not line up with throttle amount. This is due to the nuclear engine normal thrust being 60, while maximum thrust is actually measured at 100%. And as you can see, we will, we just go way over 100%. Fuel consumption and G-forces are still there, 
but TVR is pretty much broken. I can call it even something like rock and dry flight, but to some extent this is pretty much torch engine in KSP1. And KSP2 will actually will have the torch engines for sure. Just let's hope that KSP2 torch engines would require something more interesting than simple exploits of, well, call controller. Once in orbit, this is still have more than 3k of delta V. Initially I have planned for a minimum speed stop, but with this delta V we can pretty much go directly to Gili. I do not do fancy air brakes with EVE, since this is one more equation to fail, and frankly this delta V amount allow for a very inefficient approach to Gili. Gili is pretty much the smallest celestial body in KSP, outside of procedurally generated asteroids or comets, and landing 100 ton of the SSTO can be done with just one nuclear engine without the broken trust. Yeah, you can see the craft TVR is over 10 points on Gili. With such low gravity, landing is more of a waiting game than actually something exciting. Having known time warp under 8.5 kilometers is some kind of an atrocity to be honest. Once I reach 30 meters, I kill off my vertical speed and flip the craft with the RCS and just wait for the touchdown. Refueling process is rather easy, fuel up oxidize the first upright fuel for the fuel cells and then fill up the liquid fuel itself. Even fully fueled, this craft still have more than enough TVR on a single nuclear engine. Just use RCS to pitch up the nose and burn up for the escape trajectory. Going back to Eve from Gili was always a bit of a logical struggle for me. While it's kind of fun to have irregular orbit for something in KSP, in reality, even like small moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos are pretty much tightly locked equatorial satellites. Especially actually fun part uh, with the Deimos that it is actually above the Mars synchronous orbit. Like it's kind of slowly falling behind the Mars rotation, so it's kind of moving backwards I think on the sky. And the Phobos, well, it's like the speedy one and it will actually fall down below the Roche limits and maybe it will like make the ring or maybe it will just fall down, who knows. If you think about it, it's like only substantial moon of Mars that is kind of visible from the surface. It's kind of smaller than some Jupiter Trojans, for example, Hector is like 10 times bigger than the actual moons of Mars. Well, yeah, popular astronomy is so bad. Or maybe I'm just too old and my high school astronomy books from the early 2000s are just miserably outdated. Alright, now we need to go to EVE surface. And the amount of liquid fuel is pretty much on point to establish the perfect low EVE orbit. From here I can just burn majority of oxidizer even before hitting the upper layer of atmosphere. And breaking up high is very important since I know that around 40 km craft will definitely flip and block my ability to break with engines. And to be honest, amount of power descent is absolute overkill. It even feels like uh, I just uh, like avoid all of my heat protection and it was for nothing, whatever. Below 20 km craft have enough lifting power to more or less glide to the side of my Grand Tour landing and glide I did. And somewhere in between I decided to start using up my propellers and go faster and um, yeah, I had some sort of uh, malfunction. With main thrust out of the equation, only choice was to kind of safely land where I can and to try to reprogram propellers on the ground. And as I can guess, main issue was one set of propeller blades not loading correctly after the quick load, but when you use brakes, the propellers actually stop, and this actually naturally resetted my blades and restored 100% functionality with no further tweaking. Once back in the sky, I hopped over the small lake and slowly descended in circles over my landing site. And here is infamous landing stage of my Grand Tour vessel with spill on the cask. Well, time for a small walk. And look at this beauty of a space plane. Actually, I use landing gear and cargo bay doors instead of ladders to avoid any unnecessary overheat problems. With spill on cask secured on his 40 year voyage, it is time to refuel and depart from EVE. And as you can notice from previous two landings, craft is very buoyant in EVE atmosphere and 40 meters per second is more than enough to lift from the ground. Ascent is rather easy if you know your stall limits, and for this plane, pushing propellers over 160 meters per second would actually stall forward thrust. So 150 to 140 meters per second is the golden spot to climb as high as possible. As I go higher and higher, I reduce the angle of attack until I stall. 
Test runs with less balanced plane had its bar upper limit at 13 km and it was not enough to pull off normal SSTO. But here I have managed to hit 16 km. What I can actually tell from my testing uh, that 15 km altitude is the sweet spot. From this altitude you pretty much can make the normal SSTO like functional without any big exploits, but anything below is just consuming too much fuel to fight off the atmospheric drag. Those couple kilometers do actually matter so much. Once I get to the stall limit, it is time to fire up the vectors. And the vector TVR is actually below 1, so I need to maintain a relatively low angle of attack to gain enough lead from my wings. But once I hit something around 300 meters per second, I can pitch up to something about 30 degrees, and after that I just wait for the oxidizer burn out. Obviously, a nuclear engine ISP is pretty low below 35 km, but we have fixed that. Now it is time to break engine throttle once again. And here I pretty much watch for the time to up a G, and I want it to stay in one place or maybe increase slightly. This ascent, while being pretty brilliant in propeller department, felt a bit short with the late part of the ascent. Lost quite a bit to atmospheric drag, but even that could not be higher than like 200 meters per second of final orbital delta V. And as you can see, the craft have plenty of delta V for orbital maneuvers. And actually it is not enough to get to either Kerbin or Geely. Geely is actually quite deceptional difficult destination. While you can get to Minmos from Kerbin orbit with less than 1.4k of delta V, with Geely you need almost like 2k. So this is why I will use just simple refuel and tuck, and I will just use my orbital delta V budget to actually get to a better equatorial orbit. And while I was refueling I had a thought. Well, the main issue is realistic if this still is actually rather tight margins. What if you can set up proper infrastructure for if SSTO program? Large refinery and large drills have the weight over 6 tons. It can be part of a ground base, not the craft itself. Also, command module is definitely one of the worst and least efficient ways to haul the crew. I feel if you can get to 16 km altitude with the space plane design, then you can make rather effective SSTO without harsh exploits like, well, throttle exploit. Just rely less on nukes and more on propellers and oxidizer engines. Also, there is a probable variation in space plane design where propellers and wings are the first stage of the orbiter, something similar to my modular shuttle with wing section going back to the ground. Anyhow, return to Kerbin for this mission was rather standard and propellers are definitely a charm when it comes to landing and reaching KSC. If rescue is done and I have more ideas than I can possibly do in the near future. So yeah, this is the end of the video and of course, have a nice one.